Okay, welcome back to the uh, Poacher Mercedes build. And uh, next up on the list is the convertible top. And these are the plastic pieces for the top. You've got some, uh, these are the uh, cross members for the fabric that gets wrapped around. Now those two pieces and those two, those go in the body. So I can cut those off. So actually, I may just get rid of those real quick. Because we don't need these for a little while. Well, that's actually part of the convertible top itself. Um, so we will need those, but not yet. But we can get those out of the way. These pieces here, these go inside the body area, kind of near a footwell. So we're not going to need those for a little while. So this is what we need for the convertible top. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you has probably already noticed there's a few issues. This one is cracked, and these two are broken, and there's another one broken here. So I'm actually missing one piece that broke off. So this one, it looks like maybe this one broke off from there, from there maybe, and this one maybe from over here. Yeah, those probably came from there, so I'm missing the piece that came off there. And uh, this is, apparently this is a common problem because this, this is the second one of these that I've made. I did a video a few years ago for another one just like this, and it also had a broken piece. And what I did with that one was I remade it out of brass. So what I'm going to do, because, um, you know, two out of three are broken and this one's probably going to break pretty easily, so I don't trust using those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remake these pieces out of brass, and uh, I've got I've got a nice chunk of brass here. Uh, it's kind of cruddy looking, but it it will it'll clean up nicely. Um, just to kind of show you here, but just a little bit of work that cleans up pretty nicely. So I've got plenty of material here. This was actually a, a kick plate on a door. Um, so plenty of brass here. It is thinner. It is thinner than the uh, kit pieces, which is good, I think. I think it's a good thing. And it's plenty stiff enough that when I bend it to shape, it should hold its shape. So what I'm going to do is I need to figure out the length of all of those. I need to figure out the length of those three. Cut out three strips and uh, drill the holes in the end. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll just set up a fence on the bandsaw and just rip out some strips there and get them cut and drilled. And I'll get back to you here in a second when I've got those ready. Okay, so I cut out some strips of that brass. Um, I only need three. I cut five um, and I'll just use the three best. Yet, and they still need to be polished up, sanded, sanded and cleaned and filed and smoothed and cut to length and the ends drilled. So still need to do quite a bit of work on these, um, but they are cut and ready to go. So what I'm going to do though first is I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, the fabric part. I want to start getting the fabric prepped and um, and get that fabric get that fabric going. So I'm just going to put these off to the side. So in the instructions here we have for the seats, which our seats are resin, so we're not going to be using this. But over here we have. But here they're showing how the fabric top goes. And notice they have those pieces on that tree, so that keeps them in the proper spacing and you cut those out later. But since I have to remake all of those, then I'm going to have to be very careful with my, uh, with my alignment and positioning. Um, but on the next page, they give you the instructions for doing the fabric. The, uh, the English instructions here. So it's basically telling us step by step how to go through this. So I'm going to be following this and uh, I'll just show you step by step as I'm going. And it says here, this will take some patience and care, but should present no difficulty. So just remember, <laughs> that's pretty much how the entire model is. Um, patience and care, but should present... No difficulty. Yeah, sure. Um, I remember from the previous one, um, there was just a little bit of difficulty, 
but not too bad. It says we recommend to use uh, phenolic base adhesive. Um, I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I don't, I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. I guess I could Google it. But I'm going to be using this. This is a uh, high-tech 76 spray adhesive, uh, as if you couldn't read. So I borrowed this from a friend of mine who got it at Granger's, and um, apparently this is uh, pretty good stuff. So I'm going to be trying this and see how it goes. Basically, you glue the seams together and then you can stitch them. Um, I don't trust, I don't care how good the glue is, I'm not going to trust it long term. So I will be stitching it uh, to hold everything together. So this is the glue I'm going to be using. And, and it just says proceed as follows. So I'm just going to follow these steps and you're going to, you're going to watch me along the way. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's get our fabric out. And I'm going to, I'm going to get some fresh paper towel here. So the first thing we are going to need is the top, the top fabric here. So we'll get this cut out. And there are two pieces for the top. This is the main the main top piece. There's a few wrinkles in it. I'm hoping that as I work with it and work on it, those wrinkles will go away. Uh, if not, I could always iron it. Um, then you got this piece. Uh, at some point in the process, that's just going to get glued on right here. Uh, but the first thing it wants us to do is open those up for the window opening and fold those flaps back and glue those flaps open to make access for the rear window. Now, one thing I remember from the other one I did was that um, the front edge, the front edge here really started to fray on me. And uh, because of that, I almost made the whole thing a little too short because I was trying to get rid of the frayed edge. And so just to help prevent that, I'm going to tape those up like that, just to try and help keep that edge from starting to fray. Uh, the back edge should be fine if I'm careful. It's just that since those were cut at an angle, they, they fray easier. So again, we're gonna, we're gonna make the opening for the window. Let me get the window. The window's on the clear sprue here. So we'll just cut that off. These don't matter too much because they're gonna be glued in the fabric so you're you're not going to see that outer edge there but just to get rid of some of the flashing there a little bit so again it's going to go in there and so actually I don't even really need it right now um, but the way I do this is I use tape and I'm just going to go from, so what happens is the fabric, the fabric is cut. I don't know if you can see it in the camera very well. The fabric has a V cut here. here. Let's try this. There you can see it. Has a V cut here. Actually, let me, is that cut? Yep. And here. And so those fold back and that folds back. And then that makes the opening for the window. So if we put the tape right at the corners of that cut. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm keeping my tape square. So from that edge to the tape here and there, looks pretty good. And we'll do the same thing here. Just make sure it's parallel, that'll work. In here. And let me just make sure that's all square, as square as I can tell.
as best as I can tell. That looks good. And then... That's actually the exact thickness I need. I'm going to take this tape. Cut one in square. And then what we're going to do is flip this over. And I'm going to cut the tape right where those cut lines are. And again, I'm not cutting the fabric. I'm, I'm cutting where the fabric's already cut so I can cut the tape. Okay, so what that did for me now, the tape is going to make a nice little hinge for that to open up like so. And I'm going to just make that tape a little bit thicker. This tape is actually pretty thin, so doubling up on it is going to make it a little bit easier, theoretically, to fold those panels back. All right. Now that folds quite a bit easier. So now I'm going to mask off where I'm actually going to glue. And again, you can see it just hinges right where that tape was on the back side. So wherever you put the tape, that's where it's going to fold. So we'll fold that back and Just mask that there. All right, so that is where I'm going to spray the glue. So I want to mask off the rest of that so I don't get any glue spray on it. And I really don't want to run tape on the whole thing. So I'm going to use this paper towel. So I'm going to go spray that, and then uh, the instructions here says uh, spray it on and let it dry for a minute. So uh, I'll come back once it's ready to fold those over and glue them down. Okay, I got the glue sprayed on there. Well, if you, yeah, you can see it. Uh, it's a little bit tacky. It's been setting for almost a minute. Now one thing, one thing I learned the hard way from the other one that I did a few years ago was that um, when you're working on it like this, it's really a good idea to then just put some paper towel here like that 
so that you don't accidentally touch that sticky stuff that's on there now or get anything else on there that you don't want on there like if the fabric were to like flip over for some reason and touch it so this is just going to kind of help us help us from making a mess so now we need to start folding those up the glue kind of bridged across the cut so we got to get that first I think that's it. So we'll just take the tape off. Actually, I'm just going to push that down a little bit better, get it stuck on that glue better. So we'll take the tape off and see how we did. And you also got to be careful um, not to get glue on your fingers and then transfer that to the fabric. So I'm just checking, just like I mentioned with CA uh, the several videos ago, checking your fingers, make sure there's no glue on it when you start touching stuff, because that's a really quick, easy way to ruin what you're working on, is to get glue on your fingers that you don't realize and then touch and then touch it. So always make sure your fingers don't have any glue on it. And uh, because there is still some, you know, I took the paper towel off, so there's still glue here you got to be careful of. So I could have done a better job of covering up the glue so I don't touch it. And there might be another way of doing this. There wouldn't surprise me if there was a better way to do it. But this is just the way I figured out to give me the best result, hopefully the best result. I'm not saying by any means that this is the best method. So if you got a better way to do it, then uh, do it. But if this works for you, then you're more than welcome to copy the way I do it. I mean, that's why I'm doing the videos. Oh, and by the way, this, this is just a scrap piece that I 3D printed for something else and I didn't use it, so I just use it as a general purpose cutting and gluing mat pad thing. But that's just 3D printed PLA scrap. But it comes in handy on occasion. Now, to see if we can peel these off. There we go. And I think what I'm going to do is kind of just let that set there for a few hours, I guess, just to let the glue set for good. But just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, the window is going to go in like that. I guess I should have done that at the same time, but I didn't. I'll do that later. You don't need to watch me do two of them. 
Okay, so next step in the instructions actually tells you to glue the window in. Um, I'm not going to do that yet. The next step is to take the two side pieces and we need to prepare these and get these ready. So we'll cut these out. So there's one and we'll go ahead and cut the other one out. And there's the other one. So, next step is we need to fold and glue this edge and this edge three millimeters up. So when you look in these instructions, that is that edge along here and the edge along here. Fold it over and glue, again, three millimeters. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this into strips three millimeters long and then we'll put those strips along that edge to give us something to fold over. All right, we'll see if this works.
All right, so there's that edge done. All I have to do is that edge and that one and this one. And um, I think after that, I'm ready to start stitching maybe. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. So I'll get back with you here in a little bit. Okay, so I got those, both of them folded over. Just a little, yeah. Um, so I got that edge folded over, the other edge folded over. And honestly, I, I think the way I did it with putting a little strip of the, the tape, that kind of, you know, the, the thickness of the tape stiffens up the fabric and in between those two where there's no tape it just makes a nice hinge for it to fall or for it to fold over now i did realize that you know when you're folding over a curved area well it's going to want to wrinkle and bunch up so i figured out that if i take the tape off the the little one the three millimeter tape if i take that off but leave the other tape on that side then it's a lot easier to then just kind of push that over because if you leave the tape on it, the tape is going to want to crinkle on its own. So the crinkling of the tape is going to make the fabric wrinkle a little bit because the fabric is more stretchable than the tape is. So you take the little three millimeter strip of tape off, leave the tape here and just, and just kind of push and just kind of go down the line, pushing that over and pinching it down. And that I found works the best. So the next thing to do is to glue these to this piece. So we'll mask off around here and mask all of this off because we're going to spray that with the adhesive. Then we're going to mask off three millimeters on that edge and spray that with the adhesive and stick them together. And I already did the other side right here. So this is that right side glued in place. And the next step for this one then is to be to stitch this. And I'm going to stitch this before I glue the other one on because I don't want to take a chance of this starting to come off. Like I said, the glue I'm using is really good stuff, but I don't necessarily trust it to hold perfectly. So I don't want to risk that coming apart while I'm trying to glue that one on. So I'm going to stitch this one on first. Now I'm not really going to be able to show you the stitching because I'm literally going to be, you know, I'm, I've, I've got to wear this because my eyesight is not good enough for this. So I'm going to have this like three inches from my face. So you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. But I do want to talk about the stitching here. I've seen a lot of these models, photos online, where people stitched them. And the stitching, you know, you really got to be careful. You got to make sure the stitching looks good. And what I mean by that is I've seen examples where the stitches were way too long. They were uneven. You'd have a long stitch and a short stitch. They would be crooked, like one this way, one this way, and it will show and it will matter. Um, so you really got to take your time and make the stitches look nice. Keep in mind, this is a 1 8 scale model. Um, I don't know how long a stitch is on a real car. Uh, I would guess it to be maybe, I don't know, about like that, maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm not an upholsterist or a seamstress by any stretch of the imagination, but well, let's just say it's eight, eight millimeters. If a stitch on a real car is eight millimeters, then a one eighth scale model, which that's, you know, that's over a quarter inch. So that might be kind of realistic, maybe. Um, to take that to a one eighth scale model, well, you're talking about a one millimeter, a one millimeter stitch. And that would be, let's call that close enough, a one millimeter stitch. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know how realistic it's going to be for me to, to do that. Um, so I might compromise a tiny bit, but you don't want stitches that long because that would not look realistic at all. So... I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do something that is going to make it easier for me, but still look good, in my opinion. Uh, so I have a little ruler uh, here, 
and it's divided into sixteenths. It's actually easier to see on that side, on the back side. So each one of those sixteenths, you know, that's about, you know, I could, I don't know, millimeter wise, how much of a sixteenth of an inch is, but that's about 1.6 millimeters. We'll call it close enough to one and a half millimeters. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this to mark out even spacing. And while you weren't looking, I already got started. And to make sure my line of stitches is as straight as I can do it, I just laid out a piece of tape. And what I'm doing is I put the ruler on and then I'll put that on, it's just a soft piece of wood, um, but I'll put that on here. And with my marks laid out, let me see if I can zoom into this. So on the edge of the tape, getting the spacing with the existing stitches. I take my pin vise with a sewing needle in it, and I just go every sixteenth, and I just push a hole into the fabric. Now I only do about four at a time, uh, because this isn't tearing or cutting the, the fabric, it's just kind of moving the threads out of the way to make a hole. And as you handle the fabric, well that hole is going to close back up again. So if you do any more than about four or five, um, by the time you get to the last one, it's closed up and you're not going to be able to see where the hole is. So again, I do this to pre-punch the holes I need so that when I bring the needle up from the back side, when I bring the needle up from the back side, I can see where to stick the needle. And the way I'm doing the threads, so let's just say... Let's just say this is the edge of the fabric. All right, we'll just say that's the fabric. So I punch in four or five holes. So I bring the thread in and we'll say this is the top. So I bring the thread in and I just go around, then I then I skip one. Well, I skip this one. I come up and then back down, then to the next one, up, and then back down, then to the next one, up, and then back down, and then I'll punch four more holes, and then up and down, up and down. So each thread, or each stitch, is about a sixteenth of an inch, or about one and a half millimeters. And so if we take a look at that, again, if we take a look at that again, um, they are fairly straight, they're fairly even, they are fairly consistent. And, um, and of course, I'll just peel that tape off when I'm done. Now I'm sure that there are plenty of you out there who could just stitch that by eye without any help of tape or rulers. And uh, if you can do that, then have at it. God bless you. That's not me. If I tried to do this by eye, without the help of any measurement devices, it would look like garbage. So I'm just going to, I'm going to punch in four more holes just to kind of show you what that looks like. Just to show you how it's going. And I'm not going to be able to do this through the camera. Because um, I'm going to have to like get Real close to it with this so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so there's my four new holes pushed in. So I go in from the back side. And I find that first hole. I think that's right. I'm looking through the camera now, so it's kind of hard to tell. So that's up that hole.
and then so there's the last stitch I did so I'm gonna go into man I can't see what I'm doing to the camera lens through that hole Now those holes in there look pretty big, but like I said, as you work the material, those holes start closing up. So back here, you know, some of those are completely closed up. So the more you work it and press it in, those holes are going to close up. And uh, so again, I'm just going to go back. Yeah, I can't see what I'm doing to the camera lens. Uh, honestly, I can't do it without this. So... That's why I've got to do it off camera. But hopefully that makes sense and hopefully um, you can see how that's going. And I think the stitches look pretty good. You know, um, to try to make them the exact length of a 1 8 scale stitch without knowing how long a normal stitch is, uh, you know, it's just guesswork. Like I said before, I think technically maybe a one millimeter stitch would be technically closer to scale. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I think one and a half to one point six millimeter stitches. I think I think they look good. You know, um, I've got no problem with those. I think those look nice. Um, but I'm only like not even halfway done with this first one, and I've been at it for a while. And what I do is basically by just going four four stitches at a time. That's a quarter inch because, you know, there's sixteenth. Um, I'll do maybe half an inch to three quarters of an inch in one setting, and then I got to walk away from it, take a break, give my eyes a break, give my hands a break. Because like I said, I'm not a seamstress. Doing this is like torturous for me. Um, but um, so I'm going to end this video here. On the next video, which this... <laughs> It's going to be a while, um, so be patient. But on the next video, uh, we'll start the uh, the internal structure uh, with the frames that go into here and the window and the other piece and the front piece here. Hopefully in the next video, we'll be finishing this, I hope. I don't want the canopy to turn into a three-part video. Um, I was kind of hoping to do it in one, but yeah, that's not going to happen. So uh, hopefully in the next video, we'll finish the canopy. And um, until then... As always, thanks for watching.